Biodiversity, that's a word you may have heard before, but what does it really mean? Biodiversity occurs on three levels, species, ecosystems, and genes. A certain plant, animal, insect, or microorganism always belongs to a species. Only members of the same species are able to mate and have offspring. They look almost the same and have very similar genes. Actually, we have no idea how many species really exist on Earth. Their number is estimated to be about 30 million. Scientists know 2 million species and every year about 15,000 new ones are discovered. Some species are found around the world. Others are only found in small areas as they need special living conditions. Some species are only found in one single place. For example, the red kangaroo. They can only be found in Australia but nowhere else on the planet. Diversity happens within ecosystems. These are the places where plants and animals live together. An ecosystem can be a forest, a coral reef, a lake, or even a desert. Some ecosystems are very diverse and host high numbers of different species. Others offer tough living conditions resulting in a low level of biodiversity. Scientists call places rich in diversity hotspots. These are ecosystems where life-friendly climate conditions created an outstandingly high level in biodiversity. Genes build the blueprint for what a species looks like, where it can live, and how it will multiply. They are similar in each species, but differ a little bit from organism to organism. These small differences enable species to adapt and survive in changing environments. Genetic diversity is like a big biological data archive with treasures yet unknown. They can help mankind to solve some of the challenges it may face in the future. Biodiversity has a value of its own. It is cherished in culture, spirituality and education. We use biodiversity for health and recreation and we depend on the goods and services it provides. The air we breathe, the water we drink, food, textiles, furniture, medicine, almost everything we use today would not exist without biodiversity. The services these natural systems deliver to us are vital and they are free of charge. For example, agriculture. We need bees to pollinate our crops. Insects and microorganisms help our farmers. They enrich our soil with nutrients. Plants filter the air. They influence our climate by taking up the heat of the sun and storing carbon dioxide. Intact ecosystems avoid natural disasters. Healthy forests stabilize soil or snow and halt landslides. Natural plant cover can reduce fire risk. Intact watersheds help to keep water in the soil to prevent drought and land becoming a desert. Coastal ecosystems are centers of life. They produce fish, shellfish and seaweed and feed humans as well as animals. Coastal ecosystems store and provide nutrients, filter pollutants from rivers and streams and help to protect the shore from being taken away by storms. Coral reefs are the rainforests of the ocean. They are not just beautiful but also highly active ecosystems. Coral reefs give home to many fish and other species, protect against natural hazards, and provide leisure grounds. Biodiversity is under pressure. 
There is a continuing global decline in biodiversity by almost one third within the last 30 years. Up to two thirds of all living species are under threat to disappear. And the reason for this is us. The five major threats to biodiversity are all linked to human activities. Damages done to ecosystems. Changes in natural areas are often bad for wildlife and plants. Over-exploitation of wild species. Limitless fishing, hunting and logging lets stocks collapse. Water pollution. Urban, industrial and mining wastes as well as fertilizers pollute fresh water and marine ecosystems. Climate change. Agriculture, burning of fossil fuels, forest clearing and industrial processes release ever more greenhouse gases that heat up our atmosphere. Invasive species. Animals and plants introduced from one part of the world to another sometimes spread rapidly and displace native species. An ecosystem can be compared to a well-balanced mobile. The higher its biodiversity, the better it can recover from disruptions like fires, floods or pests. The ability to do so is called resilience. Resilience works to a certain point. Human activities tend to go far beyond this point. When a certain threshold is passed, the system might get out of balance and collapse. The consequences, no more food, clean water, energy, medicine, and materials. Scientists work hard to pin down these limits but cannot foretell the point of no return and future effects precisely. Nevertheless, there is a clear trend. Populations, economies, and the standard of living are growing worldwide. The demand for food, energy, and living space has doubled since the 1960s. In the same period, biodiversity declined by one-third. This loss is a global challenge. Thus, a global deal for biodiversity conservation is needed but difficult to achieve. Conflicts might come up about who has to cut back, use less, pollute less, and who has to pay for it. In 1992, delegates from 192 countries gathered at the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro. A convention was signed. Its main goals are the conservation of biological diversity, the sustainable use of its components, and the fair and equitable sharing of the benefits from the use of genetic resources. In October 2012, all member states to the Convention on Biological Diversity will meet again in India. They already agreed on 20 aims to support biodiversity, the so-called biodiversity targets to be met by 2020. An ambitious plan that succeeds or fails according to the contributions of the member states. These contributions vary from country to country, taking the national needs and circumstances into account. Protecting, restoring and conserving biodiversity can affect each one of us. On a personal level, in a family, a hometown or a region. Especially in times of economic downturn, decisions to spend scarce money on biodiversity protection may be less popular. Therefore, it is important to take the needs and interests of people into account. Ordinary citizens like you can offer useful information for policymakers to discuss future measures for biodiversity protection.